In this video, I'm going to talk about the eight most common mistakes that you might make when you're building your own deer hunting box blind or deer hunting uh, shooting box. I think the probably the number one mistake that people make when they're building their deer hunting blind is that they don't make it the right size. You don't take into account the number of people that you might have with, the amount of gear that you might have with, the type of weapon you plan on shooting out of it. I think in more cases than not, they're initially built too small. So if you've watched the other video that I've got on uh, building the right size uh, hunting blind, I think a six by six is a really good all around size. Perfect for one, six by eight is my favorite size for two people. So building it too small is gonna be a problem. So if you're gonna build it, build it a little bit bigger than you think. That's my advice on that. The second biggest mistake that I think people make is by putting in windows that are just too small. If you're sitting on the inside of your blind and you've, you're looking at more plywood than you are glass or acrylic, then I don't think you've got enough window in there. I can't imagine sitting in a blind and not being able to see, you know, what, what you're trying to see and that's deer. So if you've just got six inch windows, you know, a six inch square window, and all you can see is just a little space and no more, that's not enough. Unless you're looking at a, you know, a power line and that's the only place you can get a shot or you've got a feeder 20 yards in front of you and that's the only place you can see anything because it's so thick around you. I just can't imagine having these little square windows in your stand where you constantly got to move your head back and forth, you know, to look out of them to see deer. I want to be able to see pretty much everything without having to do anything other than turn my head a little bit. And so me, more windows is better. If you have, you know, if you feel like you're being seen from the outside, the deer can see the movement, you know, see you moving around inside, you can always put up curtains. So I, I think that th that's one of the things that I just can't believe people want to sit in there and just not see everything that you can see. So number two, not enough windows. The third biggest mistake I think people make are not putting the windows at the right height. They're getting them too high or too low. If the window is too high and you're sitting down, you're missing out on what might be close by or right below you. And if you get them, you know, too low, and you don't have a, you kind of eliminate your shooting rest if you're going to use a rifle or a crossbow, um, or you might be missing out on movement that's further away. I think ideally 36 to 38 inches is a good height for the bottom of your window. I'm talking rifle or crossbow. If you're shooting a compound bow, you're going to need to be lower, you know, 28 inches or even 24 inches. But generally speaking for, for a rifle hunting blind or crossbow, 36 to 38 inches, I think generally speaking, is a pretty good height for the bottom of your window. And usually I don't think you need to be more than 50. 50 inches high if you're sitting down, you know, like on an office chair. So 36 to 50 inches to me is kind of the ideal window opening height. And uh, I've sat in one where the windows were too high and you got to kind of always peek up to look over and that's no good. Or if you're way up on a hill, then you're going to need to have windows down to about 30 inches. Um, the one that I've got is on a hill and I actually had to lower, put some plexiglass windows to view through underneath my windows. I moved the stand to this site and found right away that when I'm sitting there, I can't see what's going on on this trail right at the base of the hill going back and forth. So now those windows start at 30 inches and I think they end at around 48 or something like that. So getting those windows the right height is important. Number four, making your access door too small. If you've got to squeeze into your blind and your shoulders are rubbing the sides of the door, or you've got to duck or get on your hands and knees, your door is too small. I just don't see the point in making the door so small that you've got to put, you know, put yourself in, in a safety situation for getting in and out of there, especially if it's dark, and also making that extra noise. If you've if, if you can't go through your door and not have your shoulders rub or your backpack rub on the sides, it's not wide enough. I think the door should be 32, 34, maybe even 36 inches wide. I like a 36 inch wide door. That's enough to get in there. You can maybe turn a little bit sideways if you have to on a 32 inch door, but that at least 32. Height wise, the same thing. Should be six feet. 
if you got to crawl down and you got your gun over your shoulder and your barrel's clunking on the top of your door, it's not tall enough. So I like to have it, the door to be at least six feet high so that I might have to duck a little because I'm 6'3", but there's no point in making that door so short if your blind is tall enough to accommodate it. Same goes for trap doors. I think a trap door should be at least three feet by three feet. Anything smaller, you can't have a backpack on. You can't have the gun over your shoulder when you're going up. It's just too small. So make that door big enough. The fifth most common mistake that I see for deer hunting blinds are having the steps be too high on the ladder or a staircase. If you've got a ladder, those steps should not be more than 12 inches, you know, spread apart more than 12 inches. So your step is not bigger than 12 inches on a ladder. Um, even 10 inches is probably okay, but anything over 12, especially if you've got uh, like several layers of clothing on and you've got your big boots, and then you add the element of ice and snow and you're trying to make you know, a step that's 18 inches high or two feet high, it just doesn't work or it makes it, it makes the situation kind of dangerous, uh, especially if you've got kids or, or someone who's elderly and not as mobile. Or when you're climbing out, if you don't have heat, heat and everything is kind of cold and all your muscles are kind of froze up and stiff and you're, you know, everything just doesn't work like it should, having those steps a little bit closer together is going to benefit you in the long run. Number six, not building it to last. Look, if you're going to spend the money and the time and put a box blind together up on posts and you know and put windows in it and uh, plan on spending a bunch of time in it there's no point in not building it to last take the extra step buy a few sheets of metal and put it on the roof or uh, make sure you can do whatever you can to have it be waterproof for the most part if you don't like a metal roof then put some plywood under it first or put some one buys down or put some styrofoam underneath there uh, but but do what you can to keep the water out of it because why build it to last five years? Make it to last 20. You're going through the trouble? Build it right the first time around. Number seven, using nails instead of screws and not trying to soundproof. The squeaks, your hinges, all of that. You know, I've got buckets of nails laying. We all do. We've all got nails laying around from whatever. And it's really tempting to just use those nails because you don't want to spend money if you don't have to. But boy, if you use nails, you're going to have squeaks. And if you want to be quiet and, and not have deer notice that, nails aren't going to do it. They might work for a year or two, but eventually that stand is going to squeak. So spend six bucks on three tubes of caulking and spend an extra 20 bucks on screws rather than nails to build the thing because it's going to stay together better and it's going to be quieter. It's just not going to squeak. And if you screw up like I do when you're building things, just about <laughs> every step of the way, you make a mistake, it's a lot easier to back a screw out than to try and pull a nail out. So, so don't cheap out when it comes to that. Buy the screws and use the screws. And finally, number eight, and I could probably come up with another eight, but number eight, not anchoring that thing down when you're done building it. I made that mistake. We had a windstorm come through and it blew over several that I had. And so I had to, you know, pick them up off the ground, put them back together, re-elevate them. All because I thought, you know, I had my 4x4 four four corner post dug in the ground three feet. And I had cross members and I thought that was going to be enough. Well, it turns out it's not. You get a 60 mile an hour wind or more and it's going to come eventually. You might get by for 20 years without that wind, but it's going to come eventually and it's going to blow the thing over. So whether you got to use those mobile home earth anchors you know, pound fence posts in at an angle along your 4x4 posts. Um, the elevator brackets I found do make it more stable and it's harder for the wind to blow a stand over when the legs are angled out. But whatever it is, anchor it down somehow. Take the time, buy yourself some cable, anchor the thing down so it doesn't blow away or blow over because, it, you know, it's, it's enough, enough work going through that getting them put up in the air once, let alone having to come back and do it again after a windstorm. So if you are considering building your own deer hunting box blind, I hope these are eight mistakes that you can avoid making. Hey, if you've subscribed to my channel already, thank you. If you haven't, please consider doing so. Thanks for watching my video and we'll see you in the next one.